the Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the regular meeting of the DeKalb City Council, March 25, 2019. Prior to our asking our city clerk to call the roll, I'd like to indicate that anyone who would like to speak to any item not on the agenda or on the agenda, uh, please fill out a speaker request form. They're in the back for you and uh, give that to our city clerk, Lynn Fazekas. Uh, and also, uh, if you would like to speak to an item on the agenda at that time, you're more than welcome to do that also. Uh, with that being said, I would like to uh, ask our city clerk, Lynn Fazekas, to call the order, please. Call the roll. Jacobson. Here. Finucan. Here. Stupija. Here. Fagan. Here. Noreko. Here. Verbic. Here. Favor. Here. Smith. Here. Eight present. Thank you. I'd like to call upon our fourth ward alderman, Pat Fagan, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pat. The first item on the agenda tonight is the approval of tonight's agenda. Are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Alderman Finucan. Yeah, I'd like to ask that uh, resolution 2019-59, uh, J4, be moved to the consent agenda, please. That is the uh, resolution on the purchase of road salt for 1920. You'd like to remove that no, from... No, I'd like to have it moved on to the consent agenda. Or you'd like that moved on to the consent agenda. Yes, sir. Okay. And then Is that a motion? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I have a second to that motion? Second. No, second. Okay. Any discussion? It's been moved by Alderman Finucan, seconded by Alderman Verbeck, that we move the item number four, the resolution regarding the road salt onto the consent agenda. Any further discussion? Roll call. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Fagan. Yes. Noreko. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Eight I. That motion passes. So item number six under the consent agenda will be the road salt resolution. All uh, city manager Nicholas. I, I believe Alderman Fagan was going yeah. to see uh, If we could move the resolution 2019-055 regarding uh, closure traffic for Corn Fest to item J for resolutions. I'm not going to be able to vote on that. So I'll excuse myself for that. So you're simply indicating that... We'll move item 5, resolution 2019-055 to uh, onto the resolutions under J. Oh, okay. So in other words, we would take that off of the off consent, consent agenda and move it under the resolution portion of tonight's agenda. Please. Okay, uh, that's a motion, it's Alderman motion. Fagan. I don't, I don't believe that needs to be voted on, does it? Just a request removed from consent does not. Okay. The council has typically uh, approved those requests by uh, approving the agenda with that change made. So okay. Okay. So I would need a second to that motion. Well, we don't need to move to remove that. I'll move that the approval of the agenda as amended. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Who would like to make the motion to approve the agenda as amended? I just did. Alderman <laughs> Fanuka. <laughs> Second. Alderman Favor. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Stupija. Yes. Fagan. Yes. Noreko. Yes. Herbig. Yes. Favor. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Fanukin. Yes. Smith. Yes. Eight aye. The agenda is approved as amended. Okay, we move along to item D under public participation. And again, reminding anyone if you would like to speak to any item not on the agenda uh, or any other business, you're more than welcome to make that at this time. And I have one person who has indicated they'd like to speak, and that is Kurt Thurmeyer. Hi, Kurt. Good evening. I'm Kurt Thurmeyer. I uh, reside at 201 Thornbrook Road. Uh, I am here to present uh, petitions uh, to the Council of the Residents on Thornbrook Road and Miller Court uh, to petition to restore the previous parking rules in select uh, Elwood neighborhood streets. I'll just read the language. Whereas there were no problems with parking with the prior restrictions on each street, there were no drug dealers parking on our streets, we have not had gang problems on our streets, and we do not expect such problems if the prior restrictions are reinstated. And whereas the current restrictions are an unjustified abridgment of our freedom to assemble, for example, the need to call the police for an alibi to avoid the parking restrictions so elderly ladies can park in front of our homes for afternoon or evening bridge games, book club meetings, and other gatherings, or the need to call police for an alibi so church youth group members can park on our street for an evening youth meeting unnecessarily impinge on our freedom to host guests at our homes with having, without having to ask permission from the police department for them to park in front of our homes. Whereas if other members of the Elwood neighborhood desire the current restrictions to remain, that's up to them. As for us, we want the previous restrictions restored as soon as possible. There will be no threat to public safety for us or the city as a whole when they are restored. Therefore, we, the undersigned residents of Thornbrook Road and Miller Court, hereby petition the DeKalb City Council to restore the previous parking restrictions on our neighborhood streets. And these are signed by uh, almost everybody on Thornbrook Road. We have one couple who's still in Florida. Uh, I think another one is also still in Florida. As you might guess in my neighborhood and my street in particular, there was one person who didn't sign the petition who actually likes the parking restrictions, but there's a, like 15 houses that don't. And on Miller Court, um, everybody's, every household is represented except one who didn't care. So this is overwhelming support for restoring what was a quiet, peaceful street, uh, and um, we just find this just really intrusive. So we hope that um, we will be able to have this restored as soon as possible. Of course, if, the, if the, all the drug dealers start <coughs> descending on Thornbrook Road to do their drug deals because we take the parking restrictions off, we'll be back. But I'm not thinking that's going to happen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Kurt. Uh, I, I want to make sure that I'm following proper protocol. If you'd give a copy of that and to I'm our city to clerk, who will then give it to our city manager, and we will then decide how the council wants to uh, take up upon that that petition and request. Okay? Absolutely. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Does that make sense to you, Lynn and Bill? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have one other person who would like to speak under this uh, topic, and that is Rick Amato, our state's attorney. Rick? Thank you. Good evening, Council. Uh, before I begin, um, I want to take a second and, and thank the DeKalb Police Department. Uh, we had a murder of one of our prosecutors over the weekend, and. Uh, their office as, as well as all law enforcement and, and county um, and city employees have been very gracious in support of, of Stacia Allen's head who we lost over this weekend um, so thank you thank you uh, 
we what I'm here for tonight my plan was to announce the recipient or, or the bid uh, for our TIF RFP and we did receive three bids in the sole qualified bid with TIF experience uh, is Ernst & Young of Chicago uh, they have a not to exceed price of $150,000 and that is uh, the firm that the state attorney's office is selecting for the bid we are in weight of the contracts that are forthcoming once we get those contracts we'll be sending them to mr nicholas for for approval okay thank you rick thank you uh, i was going to wait until the report section uh, of our city council meeting tonight to extend the condolences on the part of this council and the city to your office i know what's been tough uh, i was i read the account of what transpired and again our thoughts are with you and and your associates uh, at your office in sycamore okay we appreciate the loss is felt by many of them shared thank you for your silence thank you okay uh that is the last person who would like to speak to an item at that point uh, we do have a couple of other speakers who would like to speak at certain uh, sections of our meeting tonight um, with that I would like to uh, move along to item E under the console agenda and that is special presentations and we have uh, a special presentation and Bill would you like to introduce Hello. our uh, speaker thank you mayor uh, we have the pleasure tonight of the uh, presence of Susan Peterson who's executive director for four C's uh, who is here to give an annual report to the council this <coughs> is something that the council uh, expects uh, every year from each of the agencies that are supported by our, our uh, CDBG program so uh, without any further ado Susan welcome Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. First of all, I'd like to thank you very much for the continued support of the services at 4C. So now I get to talk about two of my favorite things, children and 4C. With a strong partnership between 4C and the City of DeKalb, our agency is able to build bridges to help families with young children overcome multiple barriers. These barriers include language, education, undereducation, housing, underemployment. With the financial support from the DeKalb City Human Services funding, 4C successfully helps children and families have better outcomes and begin addressing the overarching issues of endemic poverty that is a root cause of most of our failure in our community schools and with our poorest children. Overwhelmingly, research has solidified the fact that kindergarten is a, is a very critical milestone in a child's long trajectory to positive education and life pursuit of happiness Children with the highest level of school readiness at age five are more successful in school, grade school, less likely to drop out of high school. And in many communities, the underlying fact is that many of the children that we have are not prepared for kindergarten. Therefore, as a community, we must ensure that all of our young children have access to high quality, early care and education with rich learning environments, accessible, affordable. It is a simple fact that affordable, high quality childcare is a necessity for working families. With the continued financial support from the City of DeKalb, 4C will actively support the well-being of young children who attend our area programs. These programs are supported by our nurse and social worker who have work, who have work and work with children who have challenging behaviors. A quality child care program with educated teachers and directors strengthen a child's development long before the first day they come to kindergarten. And they lay a solid foundation for the success of this child later in life. When we look at 2018, the funding from the city helped support 3,085 children in various capacities. When we look at economic impact for childcare, childcare is still the second largest employer in the state of Illinois. If we look at our local community, we have between 360 and 370 providers, teachers and directors that live in our community and are employed by childcare programs. We have 1,300 parents that are able to go to work and are able to go to school 
because these children are in qualified programs, they're safe, they're learning, they're happy, and they're our future. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the funding that the City of DeKalb gives us. So we have happy children, we have working parents who are looking at the trajectory of their life being more successful, and we have a community that cares for their children. I'm proud to be a member of it. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, and on behalf of the community and the City Council, uh, we thank you for all the work that you do and what 4C has done over the, uh, over the many, many years uh, that we've had community-coordinated child care in our community. Are there any uh, comments or questions from Council? Alderman Noriko. Um, I was proud to serve on the 4C board for a number of years, and I'm proud that the city has continued to fund 4C. I don't think there's any doubt of the good work that 4C does. My children were impacted by 4C services. Um, I will always remember that. And I have heard stories of parents uh, young parents in many cases who were able to continue their education because they were able to access quality child care. So thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank your staff. Thank you for your kind Any words. other comments or questions? Again, thank you very much, Susan. Appreciate the annual report. There are new appointments uh, this evening. Uh, item F, let's go to item G, consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are enacted by one motion. And let me read those. Uh, and our consent agenda, if you recall, has been amended somewhat. So let me read what is on our consent agenda. Number one, accounts payable and payroll through March 25, 2019 in the amount of $5,690,784.40. Number two, investment and bank balance summary through January 2019. Three, year-to-date revenues and expenditures through January 2019. Four, Freedom of Information Act, FOIA report. February 2019. A new item five, and that is and this is on our consent agenda, resolution 2019-059 authorizing an agreement with the state of Illinois for the cooperative purchase of 4,000 tons of road salt for the 2019-2020 snow season. I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Finucane, seconded by Alderman Favor. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Fagan. Yes. Noreko. Yes. Verbit. Yes. Favor. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Smith. Yes. Eight I. Thank you. Consent agenda is approved as read and as amended earlier. There are no public hearings tonight. Let's move along to considerations. Consideration of a request for proposals for transit consulting services. I'd ask City Manager Bill Nicholas to outline this item, please. Thank you, Mary. Just very briefly, for the past 12 months, the city has employed a, a temporary part-time transit coordination, excuse me, transit consolidation coordinator. And this is a person who was very instrumental in working with us and working with the uh, NIU and, and uh, the other parties uh, to create uh, the, the mass transit plan that we have now. And the council, of course, uh, had a number of meetings, uh, workshops, and otherwise looking at that, that emerging system. And it's been in place since the first of the year and it's been working very well. Uh, the, the funding for that position came from the Downstate Operating Assistance Program, or DOPE, and in this case, we had enough dope to pay for that 12-month uh, project. And uh, we actually have enough of that particular grant source uh, to uh, continue to fund uh, the 
uh, assistance of this coordinator for a few months more and why would we want to do that uh, we're we're still working through uh, a number of things uh, having to do with scheduling and and the integration of the two large systems that were in place and uh, this would be an on-call uh, type of uh, uh, appointment uh, or consulting uh, contract that would uh, not exceed twenty thousand dollars which is well within uh, what we have uh, remaining for such purposes in our uh, downstate operating assistance grant for 2019. So we ask uh, that you approve the, this contract. Thank you. Do we need a vote on that? Yes. Dean, you were shaking your head no and... Well, it's, if the city attorney says we don't have to, then we just have to identify yeah. a consensus. The council typically doesn't vote to approve the issuance of RFPs. If you're in agreement, to okay. Are you in agreement with that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, good. Thank good. you. Thank you, Bill. Okay, now we move to resolutions. Number one, resolution 2019-056, authorizing a conveyance of real property to Larry and Kay Burke. Uh, to get this on the floor, I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. S it's been moved by Alderman Verbeek, seconded by Alderman Favor. We have two people who would like to speak to this item. The first is Steve Capitan. Good evening, <coughs> Mayor and Council. Steve Capitan, Third Ward. The, uh, the city will set a terrible precedent if it goes through with this giveaway of city property tonight. The Egyptian theater addition will be a great enhancement to its status as the crown jewel of DeKalb. This action tonight would undermine that. For someone to complain about their view of a wall screened by trees is absurd when the window looks into an alley. The current view from the Burke's floor wind, second floor window is into a dumpster corral. A wall screened by trees would be an improvement. So I was always scratching my head when this first came up as to why he would complain. Now I know. He wanted the property. The city's willing to give it to him. When, when the Burke's building was built, it was built right to the lot line. The Egyptian theater had that space in between. Now, with this transfer, it's the Egyptian that'll be constrained by the forced giveaway of their property. This makes no sense. Why is the question that everyone is asking? It doesn't make any sense. Thank you, Steve. Our next speaker is Kay Burke. Thank you, Mayor, City Manager, and Council Members for allowing me to speak. Uh, you've probably noticed I have been quiet throughout this process. I have not talked at all, but when our family name was being slandered and false statements made, I felt it important that I come forward. One month ago, the Council asked a charge to all parties to come with a compromise. In our meeting between the Egyptian theater, when it became apparent that total costs involved to try to make any changes to their designs would, be, would have a great effect, Larry and I felt that we did not want to do anything like that to the theater. So we were asked to put a compromise out, and we did. We put a compromise on the table to protect the value of our property. This uh, compromise was immediately accepted by both parties. We've owned our property for over 30 years. And uh, the property that we are purchasing from the Egyptian theater 
has not once in 30 years been maintained. It has been weeds, waist high, debris that's gathered there. Only on one occasion was it fixed up. It was a Boy Scout who did his Eagle Scout project and cleaned it up. That was probably 15, 20 years ago and built, put a bench there. And within a year's time, it had gone back to rack and ruin. Our property, yes, abuts, this property abuts to our property. It does not abut up to the Egyptian <coughs> theater. There is a walkway between the two, and this piece of property is a good four, three to four feet higher than the property at the base of the Egyptian theater. We were trying to, once again, protect the value of our property. At, the, at no time was the Egyptian theater forced to sell anything to us, as was stated by our previous speaker. This was a joint compromise. The property to the south of our building also has never been maintained. This is the piece of property we are purchasing from the city. We have overgrown bushes, debris that is caught in the bushes and trees that have not been manicured or trimmed or taken care of. Once again, we are trying to protect the value of our property. At no time was any of this a bribe as been stated by a previous speaker. I hope you will approve this compromise so that all parties can move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Okay, we have uh, had a motion on the floor, a second to approve this resolution, and we've had two speakers, and now I'd like to ask City Manager Bill Nicholas if he'd like any further comments on this resolution. Uh, just very briefly, Mayor, um, as uh, is required, uh, we advertise for proposals uh, <coughs> for these two parcels. Uh, we've received only one response, and that was from Larry and Kay Burke. Uh, so we've met the statutory requirements for both notice and for the process uh, for uh, the selection of proposals. Uh, in this case, our intent is to uh, convey uh, two unbuildable parcels, a track one and track two, the, the copies of the plats and, and the uh, conveyance document are in your background and we recommend your approval. Okay. Uh, I know we've discussed this quite a bit, but are there any other f comments or questions regarding uh, this resolution? If not, roll call, please. Noriko. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Fagan. Yes. Smith. Yes. Eight I. Resolution is approved. Number two, resolution 2019-057, authorizing a final tax increment financing incentive for the rehabilitation of properties located at 241, 249 East Lincoln Highway. That's the hometown sports bar and grill. I'd entertain a motion to open this item up for discussion, please. So moved. I'll second that. It's been moved by Alderman Finucane, seconded by Alderman Stupedja. Uh, there are no public speakers regarding this particular item, so I'd like to ask Bill Nicholas, our city manager, to make any comments. Uh, just very briefly, uh, back, uh, I believe, in, in December, uh, the council approved a preliminary incentive agreement. Uh, what's before you tonight is, is a final version of that. Uh, uh, this particular incentive is established uh, in the documents that have been appended to this agenda at uh, $150,000 worth of tax increment financing uh, funding uh, in the form of a forgivable loan. The total project cost is uh, $558,935, so the uh, TIF grant in the, or the forgivable loan in this case is roughly 27% of the total project cost. There is a provision because uh, this is an older building, uh, the possibility of running into unforeseen costs in, in the uh, construction phase uh, is, is real. 
There's a provision to uh, increase the development incentive slightly to $167,616. And again, we're limiting the incentive to, to not exceed 27% of total project costs. So that number will possibly be a little bit less depending on what is discovered. Uh, uh, the owners, uh, finally, the owners requested inclusion of language in the agreement, which has been added that uh, contemplates the potential that the business could at some future point be sold to another entity. Obviously, the agreement goes uh, with along with the assignment of any uh, uh, ownership in the property. So we recommend your approval. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Again, we've discussed this uh, in former Cosmo meetings. Roll call. Verbit. Yes. Favor. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Fagan. Yes. Noreko. Yes. Smith. Yes. Eight I. Resolution passes. Thank you. Number three, resolution 2019-058, authorizing an agreement extension with competitive yard works for cul-de-sac maintenance from July 1, 2019 through December 31, 2020. Motion, please. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Verbeek, seconded by Alderman uh, Favor. Again, no one from the public has indicated in desire to speak to this item. So once again, our city manager, Bill Nicholas, please. Uh, Mayor, I wonder if the council would consider uh, deferring this until uh, the next meeting. Uh, there's there's uh, an issue concerning the scope of the uh, work that would be done under contract that may include also some public property, and I'd like the chance to consult with our public work staff uh, for a time between now and the next meeting. Okay, uh, I would entertain a, uh, if you would withdraw your motion and your second, uh, and then if, if I would entertain a motion to uh, 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 move this to our next meeting. Okay, I'll or, they want to Mayor? Withdraw. Yes. Or the alternative would be a motion to postpone and just go okay. from there. I'd okay. like to make a motion to postpone this the next meeting. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Moved by Alderman Fagan, seconded by Alderman Verbeek, that we postpone consideration of this until our next meeting. Any further discussion? Roll call. Excuse me, who's seconded? Uh, Alderman Verbeek. <laughs> Don't give it. <laughs> okay, so on a motion to postpone? Yes. Favor? Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Fagan. Yes. Noreko. Yes. Verbeek. Yes. Smith. Yes. Eight I. Resolution passes. Thank you. Okay. For number four, we will. Consider the item which we had removed from the consent agenda. Alderman Fagan is recusing himself from this consideration, and that is Resolution 2019-055, approving the regulation of traffic for the purpose of holding the annual DeKalb Corn Festival on Illinois Route 38 between 1st Street and 4th Street beginning on Thursday, August 22, 2019, at 4 p.m. through Sunday, August 25, 2019, at 10 p.m. I'd entertain a motion, please. So, so moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Stupedja, seconded by Alderman Finucan. Any discussion? Yes, Alderman Finucan. Yeah, I'd just like to, uh, as in years past, uh, reaffirm that the Parking won't be blocked off until 4 o'clock. We've had some issues with that over the last several years where Cornfest uh, personnel have started block parking on Lincoln Highway prior to 4 o'clock. And I realize that some parking needs to be blocked for the city generators, but uh, want to make sure that uh, they're very aware not to block the rest of the parking off till 4. Okay. City Manager Nicholas, you heard that uh, I did. request? Loud and clear? Okay. 
Uh, Bill, any uh, any comments on this? This is pretty much routine from what we've done over the years. Yes. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Jacobson. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Noreko. Yes. Furbick. Yes. Favor. Yes. Smith. Yes. Seven I. Resolution passes. Thank you. Welcome Alderman Fagan back. Okay, item number five under resolutions. Resolution 2019-060, authorizing the staffing of one administrative associate position, one full-time management analyst position, and one part-time management intern position. Motion, please. So moved. Second. It's been, Alderman, it's been moved by Alderman Norico, seconded by Alderman Stupeja. There being no one wanting to speak to this item, I'd like to call upon City Manager Nicholas to speak to it, please. Uh, this item uh, is as it portrays uh, sort of a way of backfilling in some uh, middle management positions, or in one case is an intern position. Positions that will come open in the April-May period. Mm -hmm. The only reason we're ahead of ourselves here is so we can do proper advertising and solicitation of uh, applications and so forth. Uh, this does not add to the budget. It, it fills in positions that are going to be vacant or are vacant, and uh, we uh, ask your support. Any further discussion? Roll call. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Fagan. Yes. Noreko. Yes. Verbig. Yes. Favor. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Eight I. Resolution passes. Thank you. Number six. Resolution 2019-061 authorizing an agreement between the City of DeKalb and the DeKalb International Association of Firefighters, Local 1236, AFL-CIO. Motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman Stupeja. We do have one person who would like to speak to this item. Once again, Steve Capitan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in the uh, manager's uh, summary, it is stated that the agreement also confirms Local 1236's support for the city's suspension of commercial building inspections involving shift personnel according to the provisions of the collective bargaining agreement. Um, help me understand this change. Why is this change a part of the change in inspection schedules? What's the reason for it, and will it increase over time? As Thank a you. Result? And Alderman, uh, excuse me, City Manager Nicholas will speak to this item. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else to speak? Okay. No, that yeah. is the last yeah, speaker. I'll touch on, on that right. uh, in, in the so. background uh, that I'm, I'll provide. Um, so this is related uh, to the first item uh, uh, under ordinances. Uh, which deals with the various uh, business inspections that we've discussed here in recent meetings. Uh, in the collective bargaining agreement with Local 1236, uh, there's an acknowledgement that firefighters, uh, fire personnel have been involved in those inspections, certain aspects of those inspections for some time. And so uh, a change in the, the uh, municipal code in this case requires also consideration of some changes in a collective bargaining agreement. So I think that was what was being asked and by the speaker. Uh, this particular item, the resolution 2019-061, uh, touches on the changes that would be made in the agreement between the City of DeKalb and Firefighters Local 1236. And so we recommend your support for that. Any further discussion? Roll call. Stupija. Yes. Fagan. Yes. 
Noreko? Yes. Verbeek? Yes. Favor? Yes. <coughs> Jacobson? Yes. Finucan? Yes. Smith? Yes. Adai? Resolution passes. Thank you. Okay, moving along. Number K, or item K, ordinance is second reading. There are none this evening. However, we do have an ordinance for first reading, uh, and that is ordinance number one, excuse me, ordinance 2019-031, amending chapter five, fire department, chapter 16, fire and life safety, chapter 27, gas station licenses, and chapter 55, hotels and motels. This is first reading, motion please. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Verbeek, seconded by Alderman Favor, and our city manager, Bill Nicholas, if you'd speak to this item, please. Thank you. We have discussed this before. What is before you uh, tonight uh, represents the, uh, what I believe is a consensus of the council and the direction from the last meeting. Uh, I'll just very briefly run through the different categories of inspections. The commercial building inspections, which uh, the fire personnel have been involved in, will continue only for pre-planning purposes and uh, for example if a new business is started and uh, we don't have a layout I think it's important for firefighters to know what they're running into in the night and in the dark and the smoke um, uh, then uh, periodically as there are changes in the, the building space as, as permits are issued and so forth new pre-planning uh, documents will be created but that will be the focus safety uh, both for the firefighters and also for the people who are occupying the buildings. Uh, fire and life safety inspections, uh, these will move from an annual uh, schedule to every other year starting this year. Uh, there are a couple kinds of businesses that have a unique risk. Uh, they, uh, those restaurants and other food service uh, stations that, uh, uh, food and fuel even in some cases that uh, have uh, either Ansel hood systems uh, over a frying station or some kind of a frying station with, with accommodations that have been made over the years. They m might have been um, there 20 years ago and we didn't have the same technology, but we have provided work with the owners to provide um, uh, enough of, of a margin of safety to, to satisfy us. Uh, that has to be maintained and has to be inspected every year so that the visiting public who would be unaware of anything happening in the kitchen would, would be safer for it. Uh, gas station uh, licenses would, would be repealed. Hotels and motels inspections every other year starting in next year. And rooming houses, no change. feel very strongly that those need to be inspected and licensed annually. So that's the, the quick run through the categories that we have discussed in the past. Yeah, you're to be commended, I think, for uh for doing some great background information here for council on that. Uh, any further discussion or questions? Roll call, please. Fagan. Yes. Noreko. Yes. Verbeek. Yes. Favor. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Smith. Yes. Adai. This ordinance uh, first reading has been passed. Is there a indication that you'd like to waive second reading? Is there any indication from council that that would make sense? I'd entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to waive second reading. And approve. And approve. The second. It's been moved by Alderman Fagan, Fagan seconded by Alderman Norico that we waive second reading and approve this ordinance. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Noreko. Yes. Verbeek. Yes. Favor. Yes. Jacobson. Yes. Finucan. Yes. Stupija. Yes. Fagan. Yes. Smith. Yes. Eight I. That is approved. The ordinance is approved as presented. Item number M, under reports and communications, each of the council members have, uh, if they have anything to report or communicate, we'll start with our first ward alderman, short timer, David <laughs> Jacobson. <laughs> T minus two. 
Um, it was my understanding that the council directed staff to provide us an update with the 2000 fiscal 2019 budget that was due either last meeting or this meeting. And I have spoken to Bill about that update and realized mm -hmm. that with him coming in kind of in this in the scheme of things this year coming in that it's a little delayed. I am hoping that the council will support me in directing that that should be presented for our next meeting. Obviously, it was voted on. It was something that was approved by the council and it was direction given to staff. I realize that could be rather burdensome on staff, but we have two weeks to get it done and I would like to see where we are with all the changes that have been made, including the staffing changes, and to see exactly where that deficit number looks like. Thank you. Okay. Have you communicated that request to uh, our city manager? I have. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I have already communicated that mm -hmm. to the council, but I'd be happy to, to elaborate and amplify on that uh, at the next meeting. Good. Thank you. Anything else, David? Alderman Finucan. Uh, no report. Alderman Stupedja. Nothing tonight. Alderman Fagan. <coughs> Two things. Uh, South First Street Bridge, uh, just south of Fairview, that is a truck route, uh, will be closing April 1st. Um, I've been working with Zach Gill and the city manager and uh, they've been doing a great job. The distribution centers have been notified, the uh, advance notice signs over on uh, Fairview and Harvester are up. Uh, we're doing everything in our power to find uh, to be able to keep the trucks off, move them all on the entrance and exit for uh, Peace Road rather than Annie Glidden Road because we don't want any problems on Fairview. Um, second thing is uh, Alderman Burbick and I are having a meeting a week from tonight at the City Hall at 6 o'clock and I'll go over some of this also that will be the first day of the closing so this should be interesting and I uh, hope people uh, show up anything with the fourth and six wards we'll be happy to hear about it thank you thank you Pat uh, Alderman Norico no report Alderman Verbic thank you Alderman Fagan looking forward to our ward meeting Alderman favor there's a, actually, there's a new resident in Ward 6. Uh, Ava Elizabeth Klecka was born on Wednesday evening. So, senior ward. Other than that, no, no report. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> what, uh, could you explain the relevance? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Any relation? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's my, yeah, my daughter. Oh, okay. So I've got a, okay. our second granddaughter was born on Wednesday. I'm sorry. Okay. And she lives in the, s the sixth ward. I, I tried to <laughs> represent <laughs> her by you know. Alderman Verbeek. Okay. Uh, I have nothing uh, special to report tonight. Uh, Lynn Fizikas, our city clerk, anything to report? Uh, just a couple of announcements. Okay, so um, elections info, we're deeply into early voting right now. We've got early voting um, through the end of the week and into uh, through the weekend. Uh, you can check on the clerk's page for schedules and places. So we'll be adding NIU at the end of the week. I believe that's on March 28th. Um, NIU will become a uh, voter center for early voting. Um, if you have questions about um, anything other than aldermanic races, that would be the purview of the county. So you would want to check with the county mm -hmm. for information about the school board races, for example. We've been getting some calls on that. Um, second announcement, I um, have auditioned regular office hours. Uh, this is something that I don't believe has been done since about 2013. Um, the uh, reason is that I've taken um, it, uh, a, a little bit higher level with uh, things like licensing, taken on a larger role with that. And also, um, I have joined Deputy Clerk Ruth Scott 
in her uh, saga to digitalize records so that we can centralize them. And uh, Ruth has told me that uh, some searches have really been expedited through the work that we've been doing. Um, Ruth started it. She started it a couple of years ago. I've joined her, and so hopefully we'll be reaching critical mass with that at, mm -hmm. at some point. Um, also wanted to let you know that because of some of the changes that I've made, I am going to make uh, a report to the public and the city council, um, hopefully by the end of April, that details what the changes are, um, it, just so you have, you have more of an idea that whatever has been going on has been tweaked a little bit, and I think in hopefully in the right direction. So um, we'll talk about clerk's function, progress, and maybe even prognosis on that. Thank you. Very good, Lynn. I commend you and uh, your deputy, Ruth Scott, to, uh, on, what, on the work that you've been doing together. And that collaboration will, will net some very, very good results. So we thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, City Manager Bill Nicholas. No report. Okay. Any report from any of your associates at our department heads? No. Okay. Uh, our next item is uh, we would like to uh, entertain a motion to move into executive session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 2 for number one approval to hold an executive session to discuss the purchase or lease of real property as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 2 C5 Number two, approval to hold an executive session to discuss pending or imminent litigation as provided for in 5 ILCS 120-2C11. And number three, approval to hold an executive session to discuss personnel as provided for in 5 ILCS 120-2C1. I'd entertain a motion to hold an executive session. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Stupedja, seconded by Alderman Fagan. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Favor? Yes. Jacobson? Yes. Finucan? Yes. Stupedja? Yes. Fagan? Yes. Noreko? Yes. Verbeek? Yes. Smith? Yes. Adai? We are now in recess for executive session. <laughs>